Hey guys, even here, and we are one day post Arnold Classic 2024, since yesterday we spoke about the biggest disappointments of this show, today we're gonna talk about the biggest, the most pleasant surprises of this show, and also after we're gonna take a look at a scorecard as well. So, the first most pleasant surprise for me was Raphael Brandau and how much progress he actually made in the offseason. Now, coming to this show, a lot of people didn't have this guy placing very high. And the argument they would make is that he's too small. And indeed, he was. He always was on the smaller side. But I think it's the worst. And this happens to everybody. When we forget that bodybuilders can actually make progress in the offseason. When they take some time off, they can actually come back bigger. It's more likely for them to be in similar condition... Usually guys don't really change their conditioning too much, but when it comes to size, it's very, very possible that these pro bodybuilders can put on a lot of size in the offseason when they are serious, when they are truly committed, not like Regan Grimes. Raphael Brandau actually made some solid gains. If you're gonna trust him and Neil Hill, it's a 20-pound gain. And I can see it. I can totally see it. He was definitely way more filled out. This photo on the left is 2022 Mr. Olympia, where he looked amazing. Guys, he was in good conditioning, he was relatively big, and he was top 10, right? And then, at the Arnold Classic, look at him. Like, he was definitely much, much rounder, especially in the shoulders and arms, and the legs. The legs came up, and I think he made some serious gains in his back, especially in his traps. That upper back has gotten much thicker, but also, he looks wider as well. He just looked so much bigger, he definitely made a lot of progress, once again, like I said, multiple times in the offseason and during this prep, it paid off hiring Neil Hill and not working anymore with Chris Aceto, because as you can see, Neil Hill can also bring this guy in shape. It's not that difficult, I'm assuming, because this guy has a crazy high metabolism. He was eating a lot of carbs during this prep, like his high days were 1000 grams, his medium days were like 600, and his low days were 300 grams of carbs, and he was having a lot of high days. So, getting a guy like this conditioned is not an issue. It's more of an issue keeping him full and making him progress in the offseason. That is the more difficult part, and Neil Hill did a great job with Rafa. Personally, I'm trying to gain weight myself, I'm bulking for like a year and a half, and when I saw this, this progress that Rafa made, I decided to increase the carbs, to get a little bit chubby, you know. Just like most people, I'm afraid to eat a little bit more in the offseason because I want to stay lean to look good, but this is when you make a lot of progress, you can see it every time. The guys that bulk up, they gain weight, they get bigger, and you just saw it with Rafael Brandau, tremendous progress, great gain, he almost matched Samson in size, I'm not even joking. And Akeem Williams, you guys know that he's one of the biggest guys in the IBB, but he wasn't as big as Rafa from behind. But he definitely compared well against all of these guys, he was probably just as big as James Hollingshead, especially for somebody who is often referred to as a classic physique guy. Yeah, here you can see that Samson is a lot bigger, but again, Rafael didn't disappoint, he did not look like a classic guy against the biggest guy in the IBB, Samson Dauda. So yeah, definitely great gain, top 3 at this show, we'll see about a Mr. Olympia, but with this shape, with this structure, and if he makes a little bit more progress which I think is very, very possible, like, there is still time until the Mr. Olympia, I think he can make a little bit more progress, I believe this guy can be top 6 in the Mr. Olympia, he has a really beautiful shape, very, very firm third spot here, and the only two guys who are beating him are the top 3 guys from the Mr. Olympia, so, I think Rafael Brandau is the biggest surprise of this show, of the open part, but if you consider other categories, you gotta admit, Wesley Wissers, surprised everybody, literally everybody, probably himself as well, nobody, literally nobody in the world saw this guy coming, I don't know if he knew it, he was very confident in that interview before the show, he said he was bringing the best of him, great fullness, great conditioning, he did look awesome in his uh, physique updates, but everybody can look good in their IG photos, I didn't know, I didn't know, no, I had no idea that he was gonna bring something insane like this, and there is a comment under this exact video that says, if this is not classic physique, I don't know what is, 
And I think that comment really describes West Louisers. This is classic physique, period. He finally came through. He finally figured it out with conditioning, with fullness, with completeness. He definitely made progress in his physique in certain body parts. And with his height, with his size because of that height, he was just commanding attention because of that wow factor that he brought. Even though Ramon had much smaller waist, much better looking abs, definitely way more complete legs from the front, from behind as well, but still, still Wesley, with his golden era, old school, Arnold-like lines, he just drew too much attention, he was just undeniable, and he simply dominated this show. Like I said earlier, it's, it's hard to predict things like this, but I think it's less likely to see a guy who is never in great condition bring it, right? I think it's more likely for an open bodybuilder to make gains, to make muscle in an off-season, a long off-season, rather than seeing like a classy guy who is known for not really coming in super sharp, bring it like this. This was crazy. And the same coach coached him and Urs Kalicinski, and Urs was way off, but Wesley was just perfect. This is probably one of the best peaks I ever saw on a bodybuilding stage. Like, you can't peak much better than this. So his coach, Stefan, did a great, great job with Wesley. He really brought him in super peeled and super full. And with his crazy shape and aesthetics and, and classic lines, it was, it was enough. It was definitely enough. And it was a really big surprise. Nobody saw it coming. We'll see about a Mr. Olympia. But yeah, this is definitely an awesome story. And the third biggest surprise of this show, it was not Harry Chopin bringing it. We kind of all saw that coming, we all predicted it. First of all, he looked amazing in his Instagram photos, but if you don't trust those, you already know that he always comes in in a decent shape. Even if you say he wasn't in the best shape of his life at a Mr. Olympia 2023, he still beats Samson Dauda, so, you know, he was definitely a heavy favorite to win this show. And of course, it came true, but also he seemed very, very driven, like he seemed angry after what happened to Mr. Olympia. So he decided to come in better here. And the biggest surprise about him is his back. His back was always a weak point. This is definitely the first time it looked this good. The first time we saw some lines, cuts, separation in his lower lats. And this definitely did surprise me. Yeah, I saw it in his physique update photos, but I wasn't sure how accurate can it be? Like, how much progress can you make in like 2-3 months, right? There was no off-season. But he surprised, he delivered, he improved. Guys, it's crazy. With that horrible training form, he managed to make progress. I guess he throws all the rules down the toilet, you know, controlling your weight, doing your slow negatives, doing the, the, the proper, the perfect execution of the reps. I guess it all doesn't really matter that much. If you have genetics like Hadi, you're willing to put a work in, and you have some sort of a connection, you can still make muscle whichever way you like. In case you guys forgot, this is basically what Hadi's back looked like back in 2022 when he won his first Mr. Olympia and the only one and he was heavily criticized for not having a back, for not having low back details. Yeah, he wasn't in his best conditioning, but still, there was no back, there were no lats. They were completely missing. And just look at this back now. A completely different back, changed massively. I don't know how much can he make it better before the Mr. Olympia, because he's gonna need any improvements he can make for Derek Lancer, because that guy's back is crazy, much, much better than this one. But, you know, if Hardy looked like this at the Mr. Olympia, I don't know. I don't know what would be the outcome. I think he would have probably won the Mr. Olympia looking like this. So, yeah, one thing is for sure, Hardy is not done. Not just yet. He still has a couple of aces up his sleeve. He can still make improvements and come in better. So I'm very curious to see if he can make even more progress, especially in that bag come Mr. Olympia time. Now, let's take a look at the scorecard that just got out today. And let's check out the last three spots first, because we didn't know that yesterday. Apparently, Mohamed Shaban ended up in the last spot. I don't know why I didn't see it that way. I thought he was probably better than Horse MD and Justin Rodriguez both, but uh, no. 
and Horse MD was 9th, and Justin Rodriguez was 8th. So definitely not the order I thought it would be, but you know, it is what it is. Now, as far as Hari Chopin and Samson Dauda, you can see that Hari pretty much won with a perfect score. He was first place in the prejudging and the finals. Also, not exactly the way I saw it. I thought it was much, much closer. But if you know the way the judging works, this doesn't mean that like uh, they all agreed that Samson is gonna get 10 points and Hari 5 points. No, it just means that majority of the judges in the prejudging thought Hari is winning and the same thing happened in the finals. So simply, Hari won both rounds and he ended up in a very firm first spot. Samson was definitely very firmly in the second. Rafa was very firmly in that third. Where it became interesting is James Collins here and John De La Rosa. It was a tie in the prejudging. Both of these guys had 23 points. And in the finals, John De La Rosa pulled ahead with the five points less, which also doesn't make sense to me at all because John was definitely much worse in the finals he didn't put any glaze on I thought James looked pretty much the same but what do you know maybe it was different in person and also another interesting thing very very interesting thing is that uh, Akeem Williams was actually fourth in the finals and he was seventh in the prejudging so all points together he ended up in sixth he climbed up one spot after the prejudging i do think he improved a lot but maybe he was a little bit overlooked in the prejudging whatever you guys think about this whole thing about the scorecard tell me down below in the comment section now let's check out the classic physique as well because this one is very very interesting wesley wisters won by a single point only one point that's very interesting that's definitely very interesting when it happens that way and i think most people actually thought ramon was winning the show it was also an apples and oranges kind of thing like at the open wesley had that crazy shape with fullness and size his posing was better he was more confident he had that uh, commanding presence so yeah he won deservedly if you ask me but it was very very close it was extremely close also, it was pretty close between Urs and Brion, and I can see a lot of people saying that the Brion should have been third. Yeah, it was very close, it could have been that way, but it didn't. Urs ended up in third, so that's it. Definitely a very, very interesting show. Whatever is on your mind, guys, please comment down below, like this video if you enjoyed it, and for more bodybuilding content like this, guys, please stay tuned, subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching, see you soon, guys, all the best, and bye-bye.